How to create a custom Olama model using Jenkins. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.426.3. Attached to this controller, I have a macOS based agent that has Olama installed on it. Now, what is Olama? If we take a look at the Olama site, Olama gives us the ability to run large language models locally. So again, I said I had a Mac OS based agent. I actually have an M2 Mac Studio with Olama installed on it. So I have enough power built into that machine to be able to run the basic Olama models. Now, when I installed Olama on that M2 Mac Studio, I installed it using Homebrew. Now, because I installed Olama using Homebrew, I needed to make a change to my agent configuration. Let's go take a look at that. If we go back into our controller, go down to Agent 2, which is my Mac based agent, and if I take a look at the configuration and we go down to the bottom, I've added an environment variable, path plus brew underscore bin. And the value for that is the path for my homebrew bin. So it's slash opt slash homebrew slash bin. By creating this environment variable, this makes any binary in the homebrew path available for usage within my jobs. Now, what we want to do is we want to create a new custom model based on an existing model. So let's go ahead and go over to Olama and we can search for a model. So up here at the top, let's say I want to search for Mistral. In fact, Mistral is right here at the top. What we can see here is Mistral is currently available at 0.2. If we look at tags, we can see the latest and we can also see instruct in V02. Notice the hash that's available in all three of these models. They each end in 507. So what that tells me is all three of those tags are pointing at the exact same model. Now, if you've worked with container images at all, this is going to become more and more familiar. So what we want to do is we want to extend the Mistral model and we're going to create a new model that has a new system message. Well, how do I do that? Well, if we go ahead and take a look at how we would modify the model, we'll take a look at the documentation for Olama. Again, if you've worked with container images at all, you may be used to working with a Docker file. What we now have in working with the models is a model file. So we're saying from and whatever image that we're going to use. In our case, it's going to be Mistral. We can set parameters or we can set system. Well, what are all the different values for this? If we take a look at the model documentation, we can see that there are a number of instructions. We have from, parameter, template, system, adapter, license, and message. So let's go take a look at the sample repository. The link for that repository is down in the description. So what I have is a model file and a Jenkins file. In my model file, what I've set up is the first line is from Mistral. And notice I'm also specifying the tag. I'm not doing Mistral colon latest. I'm doing Mistral colon v0.2, which at this point, at the time of recording, v0.2 is exactly the same as latest. Next up, I'm setting the parameter to a temperature of 0.3. I'm also setting the context window to 4096. Now, all of these values that are in this model file are covered very well in the documentation. But the one that we want to look at specifically is this last one, system. You are the butler, the mascot for Jenkins, the leading open source automation server, acting as an assistant. Now, let's pause for just a second. By just setting this system message, that doesn't retrain the model not by any stretch of the imagination, but it's going to interact as if it is the butler. So what does that really mean? Well, let's go take a look at the Jenkins file. And when this Jenkins file runs, what we're going to see are a number of items. Number one, we're connecting up to my agent, agent two. Now, if you're testing this out for yourself, you may need to just make a clone of this repository and change out the agent for wherever you have Olama running. But in my setup, it's on agent two. What we're going to do is we're first going to verify that Olama is available. Always a great idea to do. Make sure your tools are available before trying to use the tool to do anything else. So get the version. I'm going to clean up the old versions. Now, again, if you've worked with Docker or any other container runtime, these commands look very similar. I'm saying Olama remove the butler colon latest. Now, what that's going to do is it's going to remove the model, the butler that's on the server. Now, the way that Olama RM is set up is if it doesn't find it, it's going to fail. That's why I'm piping true to the command. Same for the v02, and then also a namespace, which we'll get into in just a few moments. Next up, I'm going to pull 
Mistral V02. We'll do a list so we can see it in our output. We're going to run a quick little command saying hi, and we'll take that output and output it to the log file. Next up, we're going to build the Butler image. Now I'm using the word image because I've worked with Docker enough, but we're actually building the Butler model. So we're going to create the Butler and we're going to specify which model file we want to use, dash F dot slash model file. We'll run the list again to see what other models are available. We'll then check and make sure that it's responding with something. Now, what is that something? Well, we expect that something to be in the words of something like Jenkins, the butler. So we'll see how that plays out. Next up, we're going to copy the models into the correct namespace. If you've worked with Docker before and specifically Docker Hub, you may be building an image locally, but you can't push just that image up to Docker Hub. You have to put it into a specific namespace. That's what we're going to do here. We're going to have a specific namespace on Olama so we can push up the Butler image to a namespace. In this case, the namespace is going to be my account, Darren Pope. We'll do a list. We'll make sure we see everything. Then we'll do the push. Now notice we're also doing a push that looks very similar to probably what you would do is if you were working with Docker. You may push up a latest tag, and I'm also pushing up my very specific V02 tag. And in my post always, I'm just going to clean up everything that I've done so I could start over again with another run. So enough talking. Let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. So we'll go back over to our controller. We'll go into our Llama job. This job is pointing at the Jenkins file in the repository that we were just looking at. And let's go ahead and click on Build Now. Now that the job's completed, let's go ahead and review this log. Let's go all the way up top and look at every step that happened. First off, we run Olama version that gives us at time of recording 0.1.24. We do the removes. Now notice here when we say Olama remove the Butler latest, it's not found. But because we return true, we continue on and run the next commands. So we remove all of the models that we are expecting to create during this run. Next up, we pull Mistral v02. So if we go ahead and scroll down to the bottom of the pull, what we'll see is everything is fine and was successful. If we take a look at list, we can see Mistral Latest and Mistral V2. Now what you'll see here is Mistral Latest was pulled about 57 minutes ago and Mistral V02 was pulled just a second ago. Earlier on, I had pulled Mistral Latest manually. So what we can see here is it went ahead and pulled it and made sure everything looks fine. Now we can see both of these are pointing at the same hash. Now let's go ahead and look at the output for Olama Run Mistral V02 where we just said hi. So what we can see here from the output is, hello, how may I help you today? If you have any questions or need assistance with something, please feel free to ask. So a very general response to hi. So now let's take a look at what happens when we create the new the Butler model. So we create it, we can see all the writing, we do our list, we can see the Butler latest is here. So we built Butler latest less than a second ago. Then we run the Butler. Let's take a look at the output here. Hello there, I'm the butler, your friendly and efficient assistant from Jenkins, the world-renowned open source automation software. It's a pleasure to meet you. How may I assist today? Watch this. In your continuous integration and delivery journey, let me know if you have any questions or tasks that need attending to. I'm always here to help. Notice how that change in the system value took us from a general model to a more specific model. Now, I could ask the same question of either model and based on the system message that I have, we'll probably get roughly the same answer, but the voice that's given back to us is either going to be general or in the voice of the butler. Now, let's ignore the output from that for a moment. We can see that we actually do have a separate model. Notice here, much like what I would do in a Docker type image scenario for my model, what I'm saying is copy the latest image to my namespace. So Darren Pope, the butler latest. Notice I'm also copying the butler to a specific tagged version. Again, I would do this much in the same way with Docker. We check the list. Now we can see here, I have a butler latest and a butler v2, both in the Darren Pope namespace. Then we do two pushes. First off, we do the push for butler latest, and we're also doing a push for butler v2. Now, if we go all the way to the bottom, what we're going to see is we do our final cleanup to where we're removing everything that we just built and creating the model, tagging it, copying that model to two namespaces, and then pushing those namespaces up. 
Now let's go over to my Olama account. And what we'll do is we'll go up to my name, click on that and click on your models. So what I have now is Darren Pope, the butler. If I click into this, because this did not exist before, there's no overview, there's no model summary or anything else. I can't make those changes via the command line, but what I do see here is my tags. And I'll see my two tags, latest and V02. They both have the exact same hash, which is what I would expect because latest was built and then I tagged V2 off of the latest. We just scratched the surface in creating a model using Jenkins. If you have any questions about what I did, please leave a comment down below the video. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on X at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.